So MGTX uh, uh, thymectomy tri trial was a landmark study, uh, was a prospective uh, study in patient with non-thymometous myasthenia gravis or acetylcholine receptor antibody positive. Uh, the lead author and investigator on this is Dr. Gil Wolf. Uh, we were a participating site in the study. 126 patients were enrolled uh, in the study. And the study uh, uh, went on for three years with an extension phase up to a total of five years. Uh, prior uh, analysis of thymectomy in myasthenia gravis relied on uh, retrospective data analysis, individual case series, so there was no confirmation that medical versus surgical treatment has a definite edge over the other. The uh, MGTX study uh, were uh, two groups, patient undergo extend, extended transternal thymectomy, and they were allowed to stay on prednisone, and there were another arm where the prednisone arm alone. So there were comparison between the two groups. And what was found at the end of three years is that uh, patients who underwent thymectomy have a uh, time-weighted uh, uh, average QMG, quantitative myasthenia gravis score, which is a, me a validated instrument in myasthenia gravis that was significantly lower than patients who were in the prednisone or arm. They also required less prednisone dosage compared to the one who are on the prednisone arm alone, and they required less immunosuppressive medication and less hospital admission. So again, generalized myasthenia gravis, ACHR antibody positive, non-thymoma, uh, this was the study uh, of, uh, you know, uh, great results in that, uh, in that way. So the, uh, which patients are most likely to benefit for thymectomy? So the question is, if a patient has thymoma, regardless of age or sex, that uh, tumor has to be excised and removed. So thymectomy is, a, is recommended for all patients with thymoma. Now, the, f the way the MGTX trial was, like patients to be between the age of 18 and 65. So again, patients who are younger than 65 years of age, so where their thymus is still hyperplastic or active, this is the non thymometers these are the patients who do not have tumor, uh, are uh, likely to benefit. Generalized myasthenia gravis, uh, as well as a steel receptor antibody positive, because there is another antibody, another subset of patients with myasthenia gravis, about 6%, uh, 7% who are musk positive myasthenia. Uh, gravis. These patients typically do not have thymoma and they're less likely also to benefit from thymectomy and they do have a different clinical course. Uh, so, uh, significant, uh, uh, you know, development in the last uh, couple of years in terms of the treatment, uh, whereas uh, you know, for uh, many years, uh, we only had prednisone and immunosuppressive medication. Then came plasmapheresis, IVIG, which again, none of them, uh, uh, you know, are, none of them are like FDA approved uh, for uh, myasthenia gravis, but uh, proved to be effective uh, based on uh, evidence-based medicine and uh, controlled clinical trials. Then uh, came another trial, which was the REGAIN study, uh, it, for the use of a complement uh, inhibitor, uh, eclizumab, for generalized myasthenia gravis who are ACHR antibody positive. And the study uh, was positive, uh, endpoints were met. And the rationale being is like developing of a drug targeting the pathogenesis or the pathophysiology of myasthenia gravis. So complement activation is a very important uh, pathway that lead to destruction of the neuromuscular junction and eclizumab by blocking a certain component of complement, which is the C5 uh, component blocker. It blocked the complement cascade activation and uh, lessen the occurrence of damage at the neuromuscular junction and preserve those receptors. So the other line of uh, treatment, uh, uh, which is not yet 
commercially available, but in clinical trials are uh, monoclonal antibody acting uh, to modulate the FCRN receptor. Why the FCRN receptor is important? Because uh, pathogenic antibodies, uh, which are like the bad antibodies in myasthenia gravis, uh, by binding to the FCRN receptors, are protected from lysosomal degradation, and they stay in the circulation, and that con contribute to the uh, prolonged half-life of IgG uh, of those antibodies in patients with myasthenia gravis. By devising medication like those monoclonal antibodies that block the FCRN receptors, then the endogenous immunoglobulins uh, have no place to uh, sit on those receptors because they're already blocked and undergo lysosomal degradation inside the cell. And um, again, uh, uh, clinical trials are still in progress in that regard.